welcome back to another mail call with Vintage Diecast Restorations. I am super, super excited to open this package. Um, as you can see, it's got the international shipping label on it here. And this is coming to me from Williams Bentley in Belgium. Um, so you can see on the label here, it says Matchbox Cars and Bag Chocolate Bars. I don't know which one I'm more excited about. Um, so Williams reached out to me on Facebook and sent me a photo of a couple of cars that he had and said, are you interested in these? Um, he is a toy collector and uh, antique toy dealer in Belgium and he deals with a lot of much earlier toys, a lot of the tin type toys and toys that are um, you know, made in Europe and a lot of pre-war stuff. And he, in his searches for uh, those types of toys, had come across a lot of um, original Lesney Matchbox uh, cars. And since that's not really what he does, not really what he sells, he had come across um, my page and had reached out and said, hey, you know, I've got these, I don't know what they are, um, but would you be interested in them? And I said, yeah. And then I asked the most important question anytime this happens to me, and that is, what else do you have? And so he sent me a couple of photos of a very large group of very early Lesney Matchbox cars. And we had talked about like a price per car and I did what I love to do and that is um, bundle them all up and I shot him a price to take just the entire lot, every car that was there. I knew some of them were going to be really, really good and um, as it worked out, it ended up being a little less than $10 a car um, for everything that's here and that included shipping. Uh, so I got a very, very fair deal on these and i um, super excited to get them. And I don't recall um, absolutely everything that was in the in the picture, so this is going to be a little bit of a surprise for me too, because I don't remember everything that was in there. So up first here, I've got an original Esso tanker. Um, it's a little play-worn, some of the little high edge wears in there, but uh, this is, I think, the earliest model. It's got the gold tanks. Um, you can see it stamped down inside there. Lesney, England. Um, and this is a metal wheel model with the crimped axles. The front looks really, really nice, the ERF on there. And the decal on the back is mostly intact. It's got you know, a few little chips up at the edge, but uh, really, all in all, this is in remarkably good shape for as old as it is. The other thing I wanted to do in this video is kind of show one of the things that I do when I, when I come across some of these more rare models. Um, I use a, uh, a book. This is the standard um, collector's catalog. Uh, and it's, there's a few different catalogs that are out there. Um, the standard for a long time was sort of the, the base, uh, base piece for um, valuing and understanding all the different variations. So if I look at this model, and compare it to all the different petrol tankers that were made. I believe this is the very first one because that has the gold tanks and the metal wheels like my model. So if I look up this, this is a, well, they're calling it an 11B. Actually, I think these are the larger models. These look much larger. I think this is the smaller one. So that means that this could be one of these very first variations. So for me to look up what else I might be able to determine about this, I need to look up the codes for an 11A. So if I flip in the book, 
And this has every one of the one through 75 for the series A, B, and C. Um, this has all that information in there. So this is the right size. If I look at my decal, my decal looks more like this picture than this picture. And if I look at the bottom, the base A and base B, they're talking about this little piece right in there. You can see how this is kind of rounded over on that brace. So that looks also more like a B. So if I look through my colors, the red body gold trim, I have already an A model, so with the smaller decal, I have an A model with the B base. I paid $11 for it and it's in fair condition. So this is how I kind of keep track of what I have, what I've purchased, and when I purchased it, and um, which variation it is. So this, with the B decal and the B base, would be this variation right below it here. So I'd enter on this line that I paid $10 for this car and the date of the auction. And then I try to put a, a condition valuation. The other one I have is fair. I'd probably call this one good to very good. Um, it's not mint, it's, it's got some wear on it. Very minimal, very light, but um, you know, super nice model. So this is one way you can kind of keep track of what all you have. And this has been a, a really great resource and guide for me. Um, and so after I do all of my mail call videos, I go through and I update my catalog. Um, it's kind of boring, so I don't usually spend a lot of time in the video talking about it, but um, I've had some questions that have come up and I've seen stuff out on the different pages, uh, people new to the hobby and, and that are just starting out collecting saying, who is standard, what is standard, and how do you know what all the variations are? Um, so I wanted to cover that real briefly in this video. Okay, so here we've got a number number 51, no, number 31, American Ford Station Wagon. I've got a couple of these. Um, I, I've got one that I bought specifically because it was in such poor shape. Um, I thought it would be a fun restoration to do, but uh, as you can see, this model, this is all original. Um, it's got a little a little wear back here, a little, I don't know if that's just stuck on the paint, that might clean off, a little soap and water. Um, see the back, it's got the original red on the tail lights. And then uh, this side of the car seems to have some kind of a film or residue, or maybe it's just a fading on the paint. It might have, you know, sat up in some kid's window with this side facing out. Just had some UV breakdown. You can kind of see as it wraps around here, you get that little white and then it fades back into the, the bold yellow. So something like this, I would never dream of restoring. Um, this is a beautiful original piece, but uh, I may take a little buffing compound on one of my buffing wheels, my real soft light buffing wheels, and go over just this side of the car and see if I can get some of that yellow to come back and pop. But uh, beautiful, beautiful piece. Another metal wheel model. Um, super excited to get that. This one, this is one that is a new model to me. I do not yet have one of these in my collection um, because they are incredibly hard to find. And when you do find them, they are usually in very poor condition. And this one is absolutely beautiful. Um, has all the original decals in there. Beautiful original paint. Look at the front. Looks like it's unplayed with. Both of the uh, guide rods on the top are intact. A little paint loss down in there. And sometimes when I see something like this, where you can see all of the decals are beautiful, very little to no play wear, 
I think today we have a very high standard of quality control and what we expect when we see something new coming out of the factory. I just have to keep in mind that you know most of these were made um, back in the 1950s, early 1950s, 1960s, and quality control and expectation of something leaving the factory. You know, let's not forget these are kids' toys. And so I really think something like this, even with you know some of these issues, that is very possible that it could have actually come from the factory like that. That that might have just been something that got missed. When I see the little chips up and down here, I think that's more likely rattling around a box or maybe being played with a, a little bit. You know, some of these on the the high edge pieces. But uh, all in all, um, an absolutely beautiful piece. And we've got the number on the bottom, the number uh, 56, London Trolley Bus, made in England. And this one I am really curious about. I want to, uh, I want to look that up in the standard guide. So as I said, I don't have one of these yet. This is the very first one that I've come across. So if we go red body, black poles, black base, decal adverts, um, this is definitely one of the first issue ones. And they are showing, I think this is two different sizes of wheels. So this is a gray plastic wheel in the seven and a half millimeter or a metal wheel in the seven and a half millimeter. And as you can see, this is a metal wheel model. So that means this is a very first edition of the 56A London trolley bus with the uh, crimped axles. Um, so this would be a standard code one. So this is the rarest, this is the hardest to find because it's the oldest model. Um, the only variations of this, obviously they had some with plastic wheels, and then all of the later models had red poles on the top. So, um, absolutely beautiful, stunning model, and I'm so excited to get this. Um, these are just, this is what makes collecting fun, is finding some of these really, really rare, really tough to find stuff. Beautiful little car. So here we have a number 46, Morris Minor 1000. Another beautiful little piece. Look at all that original paint from the factory. It's still shiny. Look at that, it just glistens. It's got a little, little wear on the top of the cab there. That's pretty normal. I, think, I can't tell if that's a scratch or it almost looks like a little residue of silver paint. It could have been. Again, when I see some, some of these little things, I wonder if that isn't possibly even something that came from the factory. Especially when everything else in the model is, you know, darn near flawless. So, um, beautiful little car. Still got the bright red paint on the taillights. Little, little paint loss on the bumper. Again, stuff like this, never ever dream of restoring because it's just too, too perfect how it is. Ah, Brookbond Tea Wagon. So, again, another really beautiful piece. Number 47, one-ton Trojan van. I did a, uh, a restoration of one of these um, a few weeks back and uh, did it as a resto mod, as a custom. And we bagged it and dropped it down, low rode it. Um, and it's it really turned out beautiful. But, uh, and I've got, I, I do have another one of these, uh, an original unrestored. And I believe the other one I have is a later, I think it's a black wheel model. So getting this with the uh, metal wheels and the original Brook Bond T logo, um, super excited to, 
to get that, to have that. So this is absolutely great. Okay. Oh, wow, look at that. That is absolutely incredible. Beautiful car. It's the A50 Austin. Matchbox number 36. It's got the original tow hook intact. That is just a gorgeous model. I usually, I usually don't look at the, uh, the European options just because the shipping is usually enough to, to kill the deal, but uh, this is really making me <laughs> want to reconsider that. I think uh, Lesney's distribution in Europe was a little bit better than in the United States for some of these early, early models. Oh, wow, look at this. All of these are just gorgeous. This is the... Uh, Ford Zodiac, number 33. I've got a few of the later ones, and I've done a restoration on one of the later ones, but I've never had, never even seen some of these original. And I'm sure, I, I'm curious, I'm gonna look this one up as well. See what I can find on it. 31, 32. A. So this is again, this is a first edition. So this had a dark green body, a blue body, a sea green body. I'm gonna guess that this is maybe the sea green. So and it is a metal wheel and crimped axles. So now we've got to look at the base. So let me see, roof interior. If I look at the interior, this is really tough to see. I doubt it will show up on the camera, but down on the inside of the roof, there are two, you can't hardly even see, and there's two little points at the back. So that's what this is illustrating is what does the inside of the roof look like? And this one is a B. And if I look at the base, my tow hook base looks like this with the small number 33. The uh, rivet post, I'm not even sure. Yeah, okay, if I look through the windshield, can look down and see the rivet post and mine mine looks like this that's an A so I am guessing that if I'm a sea green body with a base A bonnet um, looking for that bonnet interior is a B and my roof is a B so I think I'm right here on this this top line so I think this is a first issue in the C green so again I think all of these cars that are part of this are probably some of the, the oldest models that I have in my collection now <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Convertible, Ford Zodiac convertible. So that is, this is the same car. They just got it in a, a coupe and the convertible. And I know I don't have one of these. Still has the driver. That's a pretty common thing you'll find in any of these. Or they had the little metal drivers that they just uh, popped loose. They just came out. Um, this one's not quite as good a shape and 
Not surprising, because if I was a kid and I had a convertible, this would be my go-to car, man. This would be the one that gets played with more than anything else. So it's got a fair amount of paint loss here on these, these high areas, these uh, little corners and edges, especially here along the top of the, the windscreen there. But uh, again, beautiful car, tow hooks intact. And again, I'm guessing this is probably a first issue like all of these others have been. And on this model, I do know that the base colors varied a little bit. I think, um, you know, they picked a color for the top of the car and the base was maybe whatever they had leftovers of. Um, it's probably, you know, whatever was mixed up and, and uh, needed to get used up, they'd throw that in the line when they'd run the bases through. But uh, a lot of times you'll see the same color cars with multiple variations in the colors of the base. So, another great, great piece. Whoop, just grabbed my camera cord there. Alright, look at that. Ford Thunderbird. This is the number 75. This is a bright blue base on it. This is metal. No, this is a this is a silver plastic wheel. Almost fooled me. It's usually the the uh, silver plastic has so much age and wear to it you can kind of tell but god these are just gorgeous. Again, fair amount of play wear on this but come on it's a Thunderbird. It's been played with. Beautiful little car. Love it. Absolutely love it. Number 29, Bedford, made in England by Lesney. So this is the Bedford milk truck, uh, or the earlier version of the Bedford milk truck. Um, I've got a few really nice originals in this model. I've done a restoration of this model. Um, this one is beautiful, original condition, and I'm going to leave it just exactly how it is. Awesome little piece. Man, this is better than Christmas. Citroen. So this is the Citroen D519. That is a number 66. Lesney. This is a uh, gray plastic wheel does have the crimped axles. I have a metal wheel uh, version of this that I picked up a few weeks ago and it is very, very badly damaged, very heavily play, play worn, played with. And uh, I do intend on doing a restoration with that. So this will be a great original piece to add to that collection. These are a little bit harder to find. Um, I don't know, I, I guess it's kind of a goofy looking car. Maybe it wasn't as popular with kids. They didn't sell as many of them. They didn't want, kids didn't want them as much. Um, but it seems like it's, it's been difficult to come across one. And this one is really nice. It seems it has kind of the same problem as uh, the uh, wagon where it's a little bit more faded on this side, a little brighter colors on this side. So I do wonder how these were displayed and um, why the it seems like the driver's side of all the cars has a little bit of fade on the paint. I ain't just keep coming. Another beautiful little car. I just love these little ones. For, they're, uh, so cute, so awesome. Number 30, the Ford Prefect. And I know this is one I don't have yet. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure on this one, the Morris Minor. I may have 
one of these, one or two of these, but I know I don't have the Ford Prefect, and uh, certainly not one in as beautiful shape as this. Another metal wheel model, all original. Um, paint on the top, really nice and shiny. Very, very nice condition. Little, little chigger right there on the back, but I can live with that. Beautiful car. And this is another one I'm super excited about. I, um, I have one in my collection because these are often pretty difficult to come across. And uh, when you do, there's so many little delicate pieces on this model that just got broken, you know? I mean, these are toys, kids are playing with them and, and stuff just didn't survive. And this one is really tough to find in really good shape. And this is a beautiful, beautiful model. Um, all original paint, still got the horse on it. He's a little loose, but I think they were always loose. Got the original metal wheels. Just a beautiful little piece. And I want to look this one up as well. If I can figure out what it is. So this is obviously a 7A. These are the three variations in it. And if I look at this model, I think the main difference between these three are the wheels. This is a plastic wheel. This is a metal wheel, but they're smaller. And the wire spoke wheel looks like this. So again, I think this is a code one for strong milk float. Um, and I am over to have that little piece in my collection. Beautiful, beautiful piece. This is gonna be a longer video, but man, I just, I wanted to show this entire collection purchase all at once, because it's just too much fun. All right, look at that. I am a sucker for these little tractors. I've got far too many of the little John Deere's and the little Ford tractors in there. This is uh, this is the earlier. This is the Massey Harris. Um, and again, if I go back and I reference my standard, I believe that this is a Code One as well. Um, the wheels are again the. the giveaway on here. This is a plastic wheel. This is a metal wheel, but it doesn't have all the little details in there. And the front tires on this are solid. The front tires on this copy have the little spokes in them. So another code one, um, which is making me feel like this may be one of my best purchases ever. This is the Bedford Wreck Truck 13A. And it looks like, if you see down the bottom, it looks like somebody has scratched into the paint 13. I think all of these code ones, they didn't uh, they didn't cast anything into the model that had the number in it. And I'm guessing again that this is a code one. I think the variations in this between a code one, code three again were the wheels. And this is the metal wheels with the crimped axles. So that's make, making me think that this is an earlier model. But again, very, 
Very slight edge wear on the paint. Paint is beautiful. Really good condition. Just amazing little pieces. This is the number 65, the Jaguar 3.4 liter. A little more wear on this. This is a later model. It's a black wheel model. Open up the hood. Motor, everything inside looks great. Glass on this is flawless. Usually when I, when I find these later models, you get chips and cracks. You get just the, the natural wear over time back and forth on the glass. And This one I can see right through it. That's gorgeous. Super shine on the paint. Really nice. Beautiful. Little dumper. This is a very early model. This is not a code one. I know it's not a code one because I have a code one. Um, if I go back to my standard guide again, I think this is a code two. Um, and I have an earlier video to this. If you go follow the links to the, the channel, um, you click on all of our videos. I've, I've got one where I compare all the different models on these, uh, Muir Hill site dumpers. Um, the original, the code ones on these had green wheels, and I have one, I have one of each of these, so this will be a duplicate in there. But the thing that I am excited to see in this is the driver. Um, I've had a lot of questions, and there's been some debate in the comments on which direction the driver is supposed to face. When you look at the box for this model, this is the orientation that it shows him. It shows him facing backwards. And I believe in the actual um, dumpers, that seat rotated. I think they could drive it either direction. And when I look at my standard code, all of those drivers are facing forward. And typically when you find a model, the driver is facing forward. So this is obviously original. It is pretty heavily play-worn. Um, lots of little dings and nicks and scratches. Almost no paint left on that, that driver. But the thing that's significant to me is that he's facing backwards. And I don't think that they came from the factory that way. Um, the other giveaway for me on this is if you look really close down here, I think that's a little super glue that is splooging out on the top there. So I think that at some point in time, this little driver came loose and somebody begged their dad to glue it back on and I think that is the one thing that was missed in this. You'll also see on the green in the back here, there's a little speck of brown paint down there. And I think that is, if you would rotate this around, I think that's right where that steering wheel matches up. So I think this is not an error. I think this came off and it was glued back in the wrong orientation. Um, but again, great little piece. Um, probably not one I would restore either just because there's enough enough of the original that's still just beautiful on this this might be you know some light touch-ups the red's easy to match the gold is super easy um, I probably won't even mess with the driver I might touch up the paint on him but I, I don't think I'll take him out or anything like that so another great little piece to have I'm getting down to the bottom of the box now finally These are all very well packed. And this thing, this is super tiny. I have no idea what this is. What could be that small? Yeah, for those of you who are collectors out there, you know 
<laughs> the significance of this little piece. Because usually when you find these, this isn't the half you find. You always find the back end. Um, these are always missing. They're always lost. So um, this probably would have made purchasing the rest of the collection worth it. Just this by itself. This is the uh, Scammel Scarab Mechanical Horse and Trailer. And uh, again, I think if I look up in my standard code, this is a code one. This is the smaller metal wheel model. Super, super hard to find. And uh, this one's beautiful. Well, well play worn. Again, considering the age of these things, um, I think this is in really exceptional shape. A little paint loss on the front here. The barrels on the side, the little tanks on the side are, don't have very much of that gold left, but you can see they were gold. So another beautiful little piece. So I am so excited about this collection. Um, and really, you know, it, when you're starting to collect and all of this has an expense, all of these have a cost to them. And it's easy to space it out and buy a model here and there when you find them. Um, and I, I've certainly done that. And you know, you'll kind of watch eBay for a certain number or a certain variation of whatever it is that you're looking for. And then they'll occasionally come up and you know, you try to get one for the best price you can. But uh, absolutely some of the best models in my collection today have all come from collection purchases. Um, so when you, when you have the opportunity, when you go out there and you find a group of models that are, even if there's one or two, you know, like I said, this one, you know, these two here for sure, definitely older, more rare, hard to find. The bus, I never thought I'd ever find one of those. Um, you know, those three things alone made this collection purchase with it. But to get all of these models, we've got three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 models. Um, and I paid $175, including shipping from Belgium for this. You know, that's, that's the way that I love to collect and love to purchase. So um, got a great deal on some of these rarer ones. Paid up for, but I think it was a fair price on, on some of these other ones. And uh, absolutely am in love with this little group of cars. Um, just, just a great group of really amazing models. And then last but not least, um, as I was messaging back and forth, uh, Williams asked me if uh, if I'd ever been to Belgium and I said no I have not but oh my god I would love to go to Belgium it's a beautiful country I said it would be worth it just for the chocolate alone and he said oh yes we have the best chocolate in the world and as a gift along with the shipping he sent me he said this is the best chocolate this is the best Belgian chocolate that you can get um, he said, I'm biased, everybody has their favorites, but across the board, everybody kind of recognizes this as the number one chocolate in Belgium. And so he sent me a bar of this Belgian chocolate. It says, enjoy it. And I absolutely will. Um, I think I will probably share this with my wife for all of her uh, tolerance and patience with putting up with me in this hobby. Um, but very, very thankful to receive this as well. Um, and I look forward to someday going to Belgium and who knows, maybe that's what I need to do to find some of these great cars is, uh, organize a trip to Europe. That would be fun. So if you enjoyed this, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this, but if you enjoyed this as much as I did, uh, give me a like down below. As always, you can click that subscribe button to keep up with this and all of our restoration videos, um, everything that's going on with the channel. We appreciate your support. And uh, don't forget to join us next week for another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration.